Trustee O'Loughlin. Here. Trustee Wolf, here. Okay, the first item on our um, agenda is interviews with uh, strategic planning consultants. We have here before us um, Sarah Keister Armstrong and. Um, can remind me again your name? Beth. 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 Okay. So, pardon? I'm Sarah. Okay, you're Sarah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, could um, you, you know, please take a chair and tell us, introduce yourself, and we'll get this conversation going. Sure. Uh, I'm Sarah Keister Armstrong. This is my colleague, Beth. Thanks for having us here tonight. Uh, so we've been working with libraries on a variety of community needs assessment, program evaluation, and strategic planning processes the past few years. Um, I'm from the North Suburbs, born and raised, so I'm very familiar with um, the area. Prior to moving into this line of work, I worked for um, the federal government, uh, designing internal and external evaluation systems, evaluating learning outcomes analyzing policies um, and that kind of thing. I also served as a public library trustee um, at my former home library, Fremont uh, Public Library in Mundelein. Um, I've had service on the Rails Board of Directors and I currently serve on the executive board of the Illinois Library Association. Um, so uh, it was a great transition um, starting my own business several years ago. Um, my, one of my first projects was working with the American Library Association and evaluating uh, their pilot program with the Harwood Institute when they first started thinking about incorporating this turning outward model into their library's transform campaign. Um, it was uh, kind of implementing this, doing some training with several directors across the country, and really finding out if these community conversations can make a difference in communities um, served by libraries. So as a uh, I was excited when Heather said that you were interested in kind of applying this model to your new strategic planning process, um, especially with that kind of background. Um, I've been familiar with it from the start, and I've seen how it's kind of evolved a little bit as it's been implemented more and more. Could you speak up just a little bit? Oh, sure. Sorry. Uh, so. Um, I'm familiar with the Harwood model, and when Heather brought up that the library would be interested in implementing it here, I thought that it would be a great fit. Um, one of the most interesting things to me doing these projects with libraries is that I found um, that every library really is different, and every community served by those libraries is different. So um, when you take a look at strategic planning, you really have to develop for it to be successful, a customized approach for each library. Um, some of my projects have involved surveys, focus groups, um, more informal methods of gathering community feedback, and others are more of a facilitation of meetings between board members and staff members. So I really pride myself on our customized approach and being able to be flexible in our methods to really fit what libraries are looking for. Um, I thought what I would do is just give you a brief walkthrough of what I have laid out in my proposal and then open it up for any questions you have based on that. Um, like I said, uh, Heather mentioned that the library was interested in training staff members, any interested board members, um, maybe friends or other volunteers into being able to conduct what the Harwood Institute calls community conversations. And these are basically informal discussions with people in your community, not just in your library community, but throughout the district that you serve. So it could be uh, talking to people at a PTA meeting, at um, a municipal meeting, at a school board meeting, maybe a soccer practice, um, and really reaching out into the community and finding um, not just about how people use the library, how they might not be using the library, but um, it's a more aspirational approach in looking at the community as a whole. Um, so I'm very excited by that method, and I viewed my role as helping facilitate that, so helping to train whoever would be conducting these community conversations in the best approach to do that. Um, it is a, a certain skill set that you can learn to be able to ask questions that get people to open up and start talking. Um, to, so to facilitate that, help coach through the weeks that we would be holding the community conversations, but also to um, help with a data collection process at the end of it. So um, it's important not just to have the discussions, but to have some kind of tangible feedback that you can bring back and help that guide and inform your strategic planning goals. 
Um, so I'm, like I said, I'm very excited by this grassroots approach. I think um, it really uses the library's uh, strongest assets, your supporters, um, to get feedback from not just people who use you regularly, but also individuals and families in your community who aren't engaged with the library at all. Um, so really getting into the weeds and kind of finding them where they are using your own networks and staff networks, uh, I think is a very productive and um, aspirational approach. So I don't know if you have any questions about um, my background or um, the actual project that I've laid out, but um, I also brought some examples if you want to pass them around. Um, these are just examples of recent strategic plans I've done. Uh, they're all a little bit different, like I said, depending on what the library is looking for. Some, um, this one I finished with Addison uh, a few months ago. They really just wanted a one-page document that uh, expressed the purpose of their library, what their core values were, um, really why their library existed. So um, that's why this one is uh, one page. fairly non-traditional. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and then there's a couple more um, that are kind of in the mid-range, um, Forest Park and Ella Johnson, which is a small library out in Hampshire. Um, they were looking for something more simplified that would be easy to really market um, to their public. So they, both of these libraries had not had strategic planning very recently, so they were looking for something that they could easily apply to some marketing materials. Um, ask you just two questions before of we go through that. First is, how do you tap into the staff's knowledge mm -hmm. to get at, you know, in terms of merging that with what the community wants? And then the second question is, how do you get at unspoken issues that might be going on in the library? I don't know if they are or if they're not, but how do you get at some of the unspoken issues or below the surface level? Because I see it's fine to do the Harwood model and just go outside, but I think also you need to tap into that resource internally. Sure. So how does that? How do you see that happening with the process you're proposing? I'll touch on that one first. Um, how, in my experience, when I conduct focus groups, they're very informal. They're very much like community conversations, and having someone who does not work for the library conducting those, people will open up to you. Um, so if we had board members, even volunteers that were familiar with the library but not necessarily employed, um, you will get that kind of feedback that a staff member might not necessarily receive. But, go on. Oh, no, go ahead. But then how do you tap into the staff's knowledge? Because you've got a rich resource here. Sure. And definitely. I think somehow they need to be merged. I'm just curious. Oh, definitely. That's why I think if, if you do want to pursue the Harwood model, it's important to have staff leading those conversations, but also people outside of staff so you have a mix. Um, staff would certainly be involved. In, there's a strategy before these would even get started of um, getting some background information, thinking about what questions should we encourage people to ask during these conversations. Um, it, it should be somewhat standardized so that you can get um, similar feedback at the end, so it makes sense to you as you develop your goals. Um, so staff would be involved throughout the process in the beginning, identifying what groups we should target um, throughout actually conducting some community conversations, but also at the end, they're the ones who are going to be implementing the end goal of this, which is your strategic plan. So not only getting their feedback, but their buy-in is very important. Um, we can do that in a number of ways. I've had separate staff focus groups. We can do community conversations with staff members attending. Um, but also when we start developing the broad planning goals and we dive, dive more down into specific action items, that will come from staff members. Um, could, could I, I have a question. Let me see if I understand if we hire you, what's going to happen? So you would meet with your first step is you do some just data analysis, right? Yeah. And then you come in and you sit down. Your first thing after you're doing this data analysis, which might be going on, then you sit down with staff. Mm -hmm. That your first interaction then is with Heather and the staff. Mm -hmm. And you tell them, you work with them in terms of developing an interview process. to get some more background about the library, their perspectives and weaknesses and strengths before we even started those kind of conversations. Um, what I've laid out in the timeline is just a template 
there's definitely room for additional meetings if that, you know, if, if I don't, I'm, not, I'm very flexible in my approach. So if there needs to be another meeting to talk about um, what specific issues of library service do you want to discuss in community conversations, and that's something we can have. I don't want you to look at this and say, well, well I'm just trying to figure meeting. out, like, okay, we sign on the dotted line. In August, it says, you know, you're going to sit down with staff in September. You're going to do meetings, and then you're, and then at the end of September, you'll come back to the board of trustees. Is that your understanding? You're saying, well, it might be different than that if we want it to be different. But I guess we're looking for direction. Sure. I don't. My point is, I don't want to say I'm going to have one meeting with staff in August and come back to you in September. Maybe we need two meetings in. Okay. August. You know, I don't want to be that specific that it okay. doesn't give us some leeway to really do the project well. Um, I'm not that rigid. So I do. The first thing in any good project is you need to get some background information. So looking at demographics of your community, how has it changed? What um, other community needs are there in the community that perhaps are not being met that would be a good fit for the library? Um, what are your internal statistics like? Um, what do people say when they come to your programs? What does your surf data look like? Um, that definitely needs to happen first. After that, um, talking with staff, getting a feel for the culture of the library is important. Um, before we even turn outward, you have to have an understanding of what's going on here. So that's how I would spend August, talking to staff, strengths, weaknesses, where can we improve, how can that help guide what we're asking in these smaller community conversations with the public. Um, so in September, if that happens to be when we come back to the board, um, having, at that point, having more of a schedule of who's going to be doing the community conversations, what board members want to be involved, um, what does your visioning team look like? Do you want to involve the friends? Do you want to involve other community leaders in this process? Um, that kind of thing. Does that answer your question? I think so. Okay, I was just sort of trying to get a sense of you so know it's what more, actually it's happens. It's more organic, well, basically, just yeah, kind of evolving yeah, it as you go along, as you get to learn us, and we get to learn what exactly. you're about. Yeah, I don't so say yeah. I'll come to one board yeah, meeting, yeah, and end it there. Yeah. Maybe we need three. I don't know. Right. It, it, you'll see as the process goes. Well, I think you had some questions. Did you want? Uh, I have just before we. I have okay. I don't want to jump ahead. A little bit more traditional. Okay. There's more um, specific. I don't think so. It's just showing you a variety of Thank you. Okay. What is your target for the number of participants in sessions? That's a, a great question, um, and I've been thinking about it a lot. I don't have uh, a, definitely more than 100 people. Um, as far as number of sessions that go, though, it depends on uh, like what what groups we might be targeting to have these conversations. So if someone can talk to their neighbors and it's a group of three people, that's certainly very valuable. But you might have other instances where you go to a school board meeting and can talk to 15. So I, I can't comment necessarily on how many sessions, but um, I think it's more important to develop a strategy that we're really looking at a broad cross-section of community members. And then, um, as I mentioned, looking at library data, perhaps um, you know, you notice that um, millennials might not be using the library that often. Perhaps that's a group we need to target more in the conversations. So uh, I don't have a set number. It's not like a scientific study that, you know, N equals 400 and we're going to get what we're looking for. Um, but definitely more than 100 people. So are there some standard audiences that you tend to suggest or recommend? in addition to what we may have in mind, based on your experiences? Oh, sure. I'm, I don't know what you have in mind, but okay. um, I, I would love to have groups targeting teens, especially. That feedback is hot, hard to get with traditional feedback methods. They don't fill out surveys and they don't participate in focus groups. But um, I found even having, um, for example, a high school student serve as an advisory member about either recommending how we can talk to their peers or doing it themselves. Um, this would be a great opportunity to do that. The timeline works really well with back to school. There's going to be a lot of community-wide events coming up, um, more energy than there is in the summer. So, uh, yeah, there's. If, if I'm not sure what you're thinking in terms of groups of people, but I would definitely have ideas myself. <laughs> Should I ask a question from Jan mm -hmm. at this point? 
Um, she asked, um, how do you plan to address any non-English speaking residents? Sure. Do you have staff members who speak languages other than English? Mm -hmm. Some. So incorporating um, some of that. Uh, if it's Spanish, I have worked with a translator before, so we could do even written feedback. Um, it depends on what resources are available to us. So um, finding uh, community leaders who speak that language, who are familiar with the library as well, they might be willing to do a community conversation. I don't think it, it would be anything that would prohibit someone from participating. Thank you. Sure. Other, other questions? I just had one other question. This, um, you're getting to have a lot of experience at working with lots of libraries and library boards. If we were, as trustees, to get on board to, to try to lead some of these discussion groups, mm -hmm. how do you like how do you assess when someone's ready to, to go off on their own when you're not around to, to lead a group? Oh, um, as part of the training, we would have um, like a mock community conversation. Um, it, it's. I definitely have a lot of confidence. If you're board members, you have a role in the community and uh, you have have these skills somewhere. Um, so as part of the training, it would be explaining what the process looks like, what the intent of the model, how to do these kinds of things, and then actually practicing yourself. So I'm confident that at the end of a training, you would be well equipped. <laughs> okay. And, and, and same thing goes obviously for, for library staff. And yeah, and you know, yeah. staff are interacting with the public sure. constantly. Uh -huh. um, so I, I, it's, it's more of um, training on community conversations is more of uh, thinking of the right questions to ask, how to ask them, and how to actually let people respond. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got. Um, just a few minutes before our next conversation. So do you have any specific questions you'd like to ask us? Uh, I'd love to hear if any of you were involved in your last planning process, what you liked and what you didn't like about it. <laughs> of course, five. Steph. Five planning processes? With this board. I've been on the board 33 years. Wow. So what, what have you enjoyed and what have you not liked? Well, this is a community that's, that's started by asking residents what kind of library and services they wanted from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that connection already exists. And that's part of the resource that Lisa was talking about. We have, for example, a teen board. Mm -hmm. It already exists. We have a teen room where they conduct activities. So there's a lot already here to build with. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. I don't. I don't mean that you don't have these kinds of resources. Just because you have a team room and a team board doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting feedback from people who are not engaged with the library, which is why this turning outward model is valuable. Do you generally do a presentation with each group so that they're on a level playing field and have some eye? Maybe a five-minute overview of the Wilmette Public Library. With each community conversation? Yeah. And the reason I asked it, I did the Chicago Culture Plan in terms of facilitating the community meetings. Sure. And it helped to put everybody on a level playing field to exactly know what the library currently does, because a lot of them don't. Oh, sure, sure. That, that would be part of, I'm, I'm not going to be present at the community mm -hmm. conversation, so this would be part of the training. How no, but it'd be, it was just a quick approach. PowerPoint with statistics, you know, here are the resources, whatever, <coughs> so that it was standard across, so it didn't take too much time. How long do the meetings take? Because you mentioned going to a uh, school board meeting, so how long does the, is the dialogue? It could be 10 minutes, it could be half an hour. Um, okay. They're organic conversations. If it's a couple people, it probably won't take that long. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean that you need to present at a school board meeting, but it's a nice opportunity to informally bring it up with people. Mm -hmm. It's just an example. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank you. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Sarah. Sure. Do you need the samples, or can I? No. Some of them are not available. Thank you. Well, in a moment.
that's my stuff. Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. It's okay if you need to borrow it back. Yeah, I'll take it. Reserve. I sent an email back to Dan saying you can't do this because of violence opening you. He can't send that much. Okay, so he said. And then Juan sent us a. All right. We can make the yeah. phone call. Okay. Huh. Is a holding, holding room somewhere? To the other, uh, yeah. Okay. Soundproof booth? Yeah. I'm not a part of the phone call. Do you want me to make the phone call? Yeah. 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 I'm not wedded to either. Which folder? Right, right there. Is, uh, we've got the the right here. Just put with the box. Pardon? Put them with the box. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is he online yet? Aye. Okay. He's getting him online. But I have to decide, because it looks like we've got somebody here. Oh, they're on phone, that's right. Because he's in Alabama, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Open the and have the Have you worked with both of these people before? I haven't worked directly, but um, I've had colleagues who have, and they both have stellar references. Sure, I mean, they, I, mean I guess they went through everything that they yeah. gave us. And so, yeah, the sure connections were good. But it was public sense, correct? I think my thing is... Hello, this is Harry. Mm -hmm. Hi, Harry. This is Heather McCammond Watts from the Wilmette Public Library. How are you? Hey, Heather. Doing good. Great. You are on speakerphone, so we are in our open board meeting currently. So I, we can start by introducing the people around the table. Okay. I am Stuart Wolf. Heather yeah. McCammond Watts. I'm Kathleen O'Loughlin. I'm president of the board. Lisa McDonald. A trustee. Dr. Ron Rogers. He's treasurer. <laughs> All right. So we have um, four board members here, um, and uh, we are ready to launch into strategic planning. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for the opportunity to to uh, to talk with you about what we might do for your library. Um, I asked Heather if she could provide you this four or five page slide set. Do you have that? Uh, it, it, it says, you know, Wilma Public Library Board of Directors interview. Do you have that? Yes, it's in their board packet. Looks okay. like this. I'm. You can yeah. pull that out. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm making an assumption that you've seen the proposal. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So I, I was just thinking, what might you be interested in knowing? So it's uh, who am I? Uh, are we clear what we're trying to achieve? What's important when we achieve that? And then how do we go about doing that? So that's the, the thrust of what I hope to. Uh, to talk about. So the next page you was Harry. I started working independently in 98. Um, we're about 50% of my client base is libraries and in government and nonprofit organizations. So a typical project for me is where a client says, I got an issue, got a problem, I'm trying to achieve something. Let's get all the different stakeholders together and they all have different views. Let's work and, and, and work this problem out over a couple of days and come up with a solution. So that's the most often type of thing that I do in addition to strategic planning, and it's kind of fun. It's usually something that uh, goes quicker. It's a little cheaper, about a third cheaper, but some library systems like to use that methodology. Um, the most interesting thing work I did was working in Baghdad. I mean, it was... Uniform military personnel, DOD employees, DOD contractors, Department of State, Department of State contractors, trying to get them all working together to prepare to transition the governance to Iraq. So, and then the circumstances with uh, machine gun fire and bullets going in the air, and that's what we did. I've lived around the world, a lot of locations in the U.S. Uh, education, I did well in school. I'm a trained management consultant, a school out in Monterey, California. It was a four-month school on how to be a management consultant, plus dozens of very short courses. I've led organizations, so I know leadership is hard. And um, I'm now in a space where most of my projects are either key clients or, or I've been referred. In your case, I've been referred. 
So that's a little bit about me. What we want, we want, I believe, a strategic plan. And the key elements of that plan are on this slide, mission vision, major areas that we want to work on, like marketing, outreach, programming. And then each of those areas have a, a result we're trying to achieve, a goal. And the goals have objectives, and objectives are accomplished over the time period of the strategic plan to achieve the goal. So that's the essence of a strategic plan. Your actual plan um, will be more of a narrative with some explanation and some background information put into it. And I don't know if you did, but at the end of the, in the references of the proposal, I gave uh, some websites where you could look at actual plans that I've done. And the way that looks is going to be up to you. You tell me, I'll give you some ideas, and you tell me kind of how you want it to look, and I'll, uh, I'll make it look that way. Third page, what's important? This isn't talking to Heather. Um, it, I think she wanted to involve the whole system. If this isn't just a couple of people sitting down and deciding what everybody's going to do. This is what involves the community, both users and non-users. I want to make sure the trustees are informed and involved every step of the way. So involve the whole system. When you bring various perspectives together, uh, most important is to, that they have a shared understanding of the current state, what's going on in our system. So we spend a good bit of time talking about what do our customers want, what, does the, what is the board thinking about, what's the staff thinking about, and build a shared understanding of that. Once we have a shared understanding of our current state, deciding how to respond to it, aligned action becomes a lot easier. We're working with people, so you're trying to build consensus for everything. Uh, you don't always get a high level of consensus, but I think if we could get moderate consensus, we have success. And that means my voice was heard, the process was fair, and I can live and I can support the decision. So the things that we decide upon, everyone might not be for it, but they understand how we got there and they can support it. So that's what we strive for, the modern consensus. And that fourth piece on the bottom right is future common ground. We're, we're going to try to find out what the common ground is among all these constituent players and make that as large as possible. And that's the area that we do the work in for this strategic plan. All right, that last page, how we make it happen. This is a roadmap, and it serves as the main tool between the consultants, the planning team, the board, the library staff, so that everybody knows, it's very transparent, everybody knows what the steps are in the planning process, where we're at in the planning process, who's involved, when it's going to take place. So that it's not like a secret group of people uh, deciding the fate of the, of the library system. So down in the bottom roles, bottom left, we have a planning team. I would suspect some trustees would be members of that and some of the staff, maybe even a friends group. Uh, you have an engagement team, which is going to be a small group of staff that will go out and collect information from the community and, and focus groups or small town hall, town, town hall meetings. There's the strategic planners. This is the group of people that will take the results of the engagement team and then decide how to respond to that. And then the library, community, and staff. These are the folks who are providing the inputs for the assessment. It's three big phases in this particular case. Community needs assessment of what's going on. Develop a strategic plan is how we respond to what's going on. And then we publish the plan through a couple of versions, a draft and a final, uh, to make sure it's as good as it can possibly be. It's designed for the, the, the trustees to have input at every step of the way. It's designed for trustees to be involved in it to whatever degree they want every step of the way. My role is to guide the whole process, document everything, and record and, and finalize the strategic plan into a document that you're proud of, that you're willing to post on your website, that you would use when you might request grants or tell the village government here's what we're doing and how, how, how we're doing it. So those are the things I do. The first meeting we had was to set expectations on a community needs assessment. 
in the proposal, I indicated that we would do that by phone, but as I reviewed it and prepared for this uh, discussion, I think I would actually come out and sit down with you and meet with you and talk about the, uh, the key components of set, set expectations so that really, we're really clear about how we're going to go about doing it. So the really thing that's not depicted on here but happens is those engagement meetings where your staff, the library staff, actually engages the public, engages the community in a series of meetings to get their thoughts. And we're going to use what's called a Harwood Aspirations Model, which is a very high-level uh, process to, to ask the community what are their aspirations for their community uh, through a series of questions. And then the library has to sit down and think about how can I help the public achieve their community aspirations? Well, what can we do to help our community achieve what they want as a library system? So that's the libraries, some libraries are beginning to move in that direction. It's only for those libraries who are very capable. It shouldn't be for a library. You, you shouldn't use a Harwood model if you're struggling. If you have good, solid leadership, good governance, you have a high level engagement with your community already, like high usage, you know, high library card owners rates, uh, you have the resources and funding, then you're a candidate for the uh, Harwood aspirations model. If you don't have other issues you got to deal with that would interfere with it. And the little bit I know about you in my discussion with Heather, that's the case. You are you're kind of one of those top tier library systems ready to go to the next level. Um, Harry, this is Kathleen. That's what um, yeah. I want to sort of jump in here at this point because we um, we actually only have 10 more minutes allocated to this section of the meeting and we have a hearing that will take place at 7.15. Um, 8.15 your time. 8.15 yeah. your time. Any event, 10 minutes from now. Um, so at this point, I would like to ask uh, board members here if they have any questions um, of Harry. Um, jump in here. Stuart, Lisa, Ron, Dan. This is uh, Ron Rogers. My, my initial question is, what do you see as the optimal size of meetings with community representatives, and how many of them would you expect need to be held? Okay, so which are you referring to the engagement team meetings or the strategic uh, planning conference that we actually have? Or Drawing information team? from people in the community. Okay. Um, if you have a staff of maybe two or three that will run the meeting, then I'd say 25 to 30 for them to handle that. And I'm approaching it from they're not facilitators. Uh, they don't do this for a living. And uh, we need to uh, upload them for success. So a smaller group like 25 to 30 would be, would be what I would consider max for maybe three of your staff to manage. And part of my job is to prepare your staff to be able to do that confidently. Does that answer the question? Yes. Yeah. I have a question here from Jan, which is, how would you get input from non-English speaking residents? Yeah, a couple ways you could do that. Um, the one way I've had the most success is, you go to a public gathering place, uh, a mall, a theater, some place where you know people are going to be, a farmer's market, for example, and you have um, the questions on a, a little clipboard. You just approach them and say, are you a member of uh, the, the library? And if you find ones that say no, then you say, well, look, at for a $10 gift certificate to Starbucks or wherever, I'd like to take five minutes of your time and ask you some questions. And then you get their question. So that's, that's the most effective way I have found, is to approach people face to face. And if you can get 10 to 15, sometimes 20 non-users, you'll get a good you'll get a good feel for what they're thinking. So basically, you're doing intercept surveys and paying them. As a plus, you're doing intercepts as opposed to, and how does that fit into your Harwood aspirational model? Well, the engagement team will do that. So uh, members of the engagement team would pick a location where they could go to and and just like if you're in the mall and you see someone with a clipboard, they come up to them and they say, could I ask you a few questions? That's, that, that's the format that they would use. So you are you incentivizing everybody or just 
Because that's unclear, and that wasn't in your proposal. I'm just curious. Oh. Yeah, that, that's how I would, would recommend doing it. So you would incentivize so, everybody? No. I would only by incentivize you mean give them a $10 gift certificate? Uh -huh. Yeah. No, I would only do that for those people for which you take the survey. And it, its first question is always, uh, can I ask you two questions? Are you a member of the, of the, of the library? And if they say yes, then say, well, thank you. This is surveys for people who are, who are not members of the library. So you ask the next person. And you, you, you'll come across people who are not members of the library. Those are the ones you want to incentivize. That's the one you say, okay, I can offer you a $10 uh, gift certificate if you're willing to take a few questions for us. Are there other ways to get at them besides going up to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis? Yeah. To, to if you them. know through the staff, through people that you might know, neighbors who aren't members of the library, you can ask them to take a survey. We could have a survey, monkey survey ready that they would go to a special place where they would record responses to questions as non-members. Uh, you could put it in a newsletter. I know you have a newsletter that goes out, a very nice newsletter, asking people who are non-users to respond to a survey at a certain link. There's another way to do it. Okay. But most success that I've had in doing this is where you actually approach people. Are there any other questions? Um, do you have any questions of us? No. Um, I, you know, I, when I first talked to Heather, she told me that the thing that I was, was interested in about the board, um, in terms of you working together and your, your, how long you serve and, and how you operate. So I'm comfortable. I assume you want to be involved in this process. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, we have a board culture that we tend to do things as, as a group to the extent possible and consistent with people's other commitments. Um, yeah, okay. So, so a couple of board members, for example, would be members of what I would call the strategic planning team or strategic planning committee. Would you, is that right? Um, probably the whole board, um, at least initially, until we sort of sort ourselves out a little bit, possibly uh, depending on areas of interest and time available. But we would initially start out with the whole board. So okay. So, so you'd probably be in on a, a set expectations meeting to get clarity about exactly what's going to happen and how we move forward. Okay, good. And you'd probably be 100% attendant in what I would call the strategic planning conference, the two two half day meetings where we actually frame the strategic direction. Yes? So who compiles all the data that the staff, the team brings together? Is that the strategic planning group or do the, you compile the, it? Uh, the, the staff engagement team would compile the data. After they finish their, 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 their meeting, whether it's 90 minutes or two hours, I'm going to provide them a format for how they capture the data using flip charts and computers. And then that data will ultimately come to me from all the different groups to coalesce, do a little analysis of, and then produce this community needs assessment report, which will consist of the staff engagement results and consist of the focus groups I would do with the library staff myself. Okay. Um, so it's, it's a shared responsibility. It's, it, the staff will do some of it for each of their groups. Then I would do the consolidation. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Christensen. Uh, with that, um, we'll have to end of this call at this point. Uh, as I said, we have a, a public hearing that we're conducting at 715. Uh, it was a pleasure to speak with you, and we will be in further contact. Yeah, I will I'll contact you um, later, Harry, and give you a, an update. All right. Thank okay. you so much. Thank That's you. Good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, in two minutes, we're going to start the public hearing, and I'm going to pour myself some more water. Okay. Them before you became our new board member, and we wanted you to 
big part of a car. Uh, that's the same design that I picked. Oh, I nice. like that one better than mine. I did too, because that's why I picked it. That's great, thank you. Reading by design. Thank you. All right. Uh, that's as much hazing as this board does, I think. <laughs> Swear, I think that's right it. <laughs> Great to be on the board, but the perks are pretty cool. Oh, there you go. It's a t-shirt and a pen. Why did you see your pen? Looks better than mine. All right. And cookies. I should get some water. Okay. It's 7:15, and. We're now moving to the part of the meeting where we're having the budget and appropriation hearing. Um, what we intend to do this time is have a hearing and um, also to continue this hearing until, so we're going to have a portion, then we're going to term it, end it at 7.30, but we will continue the hearing until the next board meeting um, at a time to be clarified later, but a similar time before the next board meeting. Yeah. Okay. You want to vote on that? Pardon? You want to vote, vote on that? Okay. Um, I, need, I guess that's a motion. I will motion we take a vote on this. Okay. I need a second. A second. All in fa favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. So the hearing is open. <laughs> um. So, is this a time to hear from the public, or is this yeah, time for open discussion? We've never had anyone. No. Yeah. We had one member, but we maybe not for the yeah. not for the hearing part. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Excuse me, sir. Did you sign the form? Oh, uh, no. Where is that? Do you have a public comment part of this? Okay. Is, there, is public comment part of this? Sir? Yeah, mm -hmm. but no one's ever come. 15 mm -hmm. of the 30 years I've been here. Right. So we usually just sit and chit chat. Okay. <laughs> um, but you're still on camera. But we are on camera. <laughs> uh, usually we're not. So is this a good time to uh, talk about the budget? No, because we're waiting for public comment. Okay. <laughs> we get to talk. Um, under action, the, items. under action items. Got it. Okay. But if you'd like to talk about your um, vacation plans, that's fine. <laughs> right, sure. And I do like the T-shirt. That's the that's the that's the one that I pick. I'm gonna take it off and to camp. It so. does look nice. I assume you already got one. Pardon? I assume you already have one. Yes. Yeah. And you are going to grant. You're going to be grandma camp. Yeah, next week is grandma camp. Uh -oh. So, Michigan. So what is uh, sailing lessons? What is that about sailing? Oh wow. For you. Yeah. And then I decided since she's from, um, you know, Kalamazoo now, that no trip to Chicago is complete without a trip down to Devon Avenue for some Indian food. Mm. How old and is she again? She's 12. Oh, wonderful. And maybe yeah. some sorry window shopping and maybe even buying, you know, sort of a bright cover-up or shirt or something wandering in one of the You're an awesome shots. grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's, the, I mean, Devon Avenue is not like any place. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And you've been there. I have, yeah. yeah. It's, it's wonderful. different. Day and private visit for some time. It's summer evening, so it should be. Oh, I've got water. Thank you. People out on the street. And I wanted it. Oh, yeah. 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 It's just, you know, it's just the energy is phenomenal. Just a wonderful neighborhood. It's great. I don't think I got this. Was this a new one I should have gotten? I don't think I got this one. Um, I don't know how it's on on this. Yeah, we've never had any more stuff. There's too much. I just did my Open Meetings Act training. Thanks for sending the link. So I think we are in an open meeting, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I can. Was it inappropriate to pass out? It's the, also uh, on video. Good. So, um, just for new business, just for you guys to know, on um, that health insurance, I just have an update. Mm -hmm. uh, if we wanted to share with everybody, um, 
consortium was kind enough to uh, put oh, thank my you. request on their agenda. Who, uh, WIN consortium? The um, wellness, the, our, wellness, our wellness, wellness, net, wellness yeah. insurance mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, thanks, Dan. Sure. Is there just one page or two pages? Two pages. So I only have one. Time. Got it. And so uh, I had put in the request, and they put it as the Lumet Public Library rather than a particular trustee to say, can we offer health insurance to part timers? And can we consider opening up the consortium of local governments? Um, the by health insurance to other units of local government. Okay. So this would be under new business, right? That's what yes. you're saying. You can talk about it. And Dan, do you have any idea, based on what the consortium oh, insurance it. rates are and the relative coverage, how that compares to the the current plan that the library is covered by? So I think we're in the we're in the plan now. We're in that consortium plan, right? Um, and so I think that uh, generally, the more scale you get, the better rates you can negotiate with the providers. Right. The better things have been very. We've, we've actually gotten money back from the from the consortium because we because the consortium has been very effective and efficient. Yeah. So my hope is uh, if we get more scale with more local governments, then we can share more savings. Uh, outside of the library systems, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a function of health and age of the population that you would be insuring in terms of risk pool. Right. Um, so they have something like um, 1,000 insured lives. Uh, maybe 1400 ish, as I recall. And so, um, what I understand is once you get to like 10,000 insured lives, you reach uh, critical mass with some providers, we can get even better rates. Well, it's self insured, isn't it? Correct. When is self insured? So yeah, so we pay the providers directly, mm -hmm. the rather the wellness insurance network. Mm -hmm. And so what we pay the providers is a function of what Golly, we're Jim, able to negotiate. I think it's great that we're self-insured so we're not padding the profits of an insurance company. But because they're self-insured, do they not, do we not absorb the risk Correct. within that self-insurance in terms yes. of? But luckily we're a bunch of librarians, so it's a very right. low risk. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except for renovations, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's an incredibly low risk yeah. plan, generally. You know, there's some libraries that are part of a municipal system, mm -hmm. and then you're piled in oh, with yeah. police and fire, and so, and that's hmm. much higher uh, risk, risk pool. pool. Right. And is it for health, too, or is it just sort of like workers' comp? Because this one, I think, is just health. Just health. Just health. Just you're just health. talking yeah. about health. Yeah. So now I think we've all got the same chance of... No. Bad things happen. No, it's very different well, no, based on profession and everything else. So. Yeah. Librarians, generally speaking, are less inclined to be big risk takers, which means that the risk pool is impacted by who you're serving. Um, the question that has to be considered if you're looking Sorry. to expand <laughs> the pool is are you taking on groups that have a higher percentage risk takers. Um, there are no librarian skydiving clubs that I'm aware of. <laughs> like, for example, yeah. I was going over the numbers with yeah. um, Barb today, because I have different questions at different times, and I said, what's this? 68,000. She says, that's been a yeah. I said, yeah, but I didn't to that. And that was a refund of 48, part of that was a refund of $46,000 from when? Which is yeah. interesting. Yeah. To when self insurance pool has been efficiently managed to the degree they've been refunding money back to the members. Um, rather than increasing rates, rates have been staying level and they've actually been, been returning money uh, that wasn't needed. Um, the question is, how high is the risk in the population you're serving? And there are some groups that are going to have higher risk because of the demographics of who's in the group. I don't know uh, what that data would show in any 
detail, but I'm sure there's a higher risk pool for school districts than it is for librarians. Um, because the population is more diverse, there are more younger people in it. Um, that, by a nature, is going to have some additional risk-taking in it. This is an inquiry for um, I always so thought the, young people were the holy grail of risk pools. <laughs> well, they are and they aren't. The issue is, I mean, for example, if you want to go recruiting among motorcycle clubs, they may be young, but they're not low risk. Um, so the question then you, that you have to evaluate is, what types of expansion would have populations that have the same level of risk or similar risk levels to the group you're already serving, which yeah. is working smoothly and has a actually been sorry, using the system has been, yeah, I've been going less stop since, yeah, than since what we day. assessed ourselves oh, yeah, like as members of the pool. So I'm, that's, I'm, that's I'm the trade-off. Yeah. So you have to have you can expand the pool in directions that actually drive your costs up. Um, it depends on the nature of the group. Oh, it's actually it's actually might be the day of a board meeting. Is it September 20th, a board meeting? Yeah. Um, I, don't know. Um, I don't know. I forgot to look at that. I just yeah, realized uh, that I can't move it. Let's say librarians. September 19th. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'll make the board meeting next. <laughs> By nature, they are not. How long is the surgery? Skydiving. I think it, I think it, I think, I think, it, if you're, I think it's like, um, a, like an hour or less. And it's, older. It's local anesthesia. It's outpatient. It's too old. Yeah, it's outpatient. You probably are at a higher so risk. So I don't think, and then have to have another one two weeks later for the first one. That's going not bad. Non yeah, self-inflicted yeah. injury health costs. That'll be what it is. I'd imagine that the vast majority of health costs are not from self-inflicted injury. But despite that, our costs have actually been well managed and low enough that I, we've been you know, getting I, I, The answer yeah. is yes, but I haven't watched the show a lot. Oh. So because I know what I know about the new one. So, yeah, because yeah. yeah. everyone's yeah. talking the, about The dynamic that. of... Kind of Jodie Whittaker or anything? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, on, indeed, uh, people who are older oh, are more likely to have... Oh, we do. Broadchurch. Yeah, and I know that... Diseases yeah. and, and other injuries. Um, are you a Doctor Who fan? Yeah. Okay, so Okay, so I've been intrigued by the show for years. They are not necessarily they have like high cost. I want to see the first one to see get a sense of the result of that. Those, the black yeah, exactly. Why, yeah I grew up with they get fourth a doctor, okay. Tom really Baker. Okay, sure. Yeah. I know some of the names as well. So treatment costs. Yeah. Right. But so everyone has like their favorite doctor. Because because this pool is, pool is, oh, I mean, I don't know yet, but okay. I think it's is as well managed as it probably can be. And then the issue becomes what additional levels of I think it'll help the story arc go in a different direction. And where is the breaking point? Yeah. That's what I, I think was achieving a lower rate and the higher risk that you might so you might take on mix it up by the people bit, you're serving to get to that risk. Feel fresh again? Maybe a lower risk. They, I think they struggled sort of the last cool couple of seasons. Yeah. Well, well, that's the question. I mean, so that's what has to be the Right. Yeah. Why but not? Know that so that's right. Right. So my goal is to start watching. Now, there also may be a parallel school district. And I've read the other book. I've read the book series. I have a friend that's done it. I didn't invent it. You don't have to do that. She's your girl. Yeah. I like Dr. Number nine. But, um, nine, okay. Who was that? Uh, that was David sure Dillon. Okay. That's my favorite. Okay. But everyone has their favorite. Each you know, but if you want to go in the past the 70s and the real, you know, the kitschy, yeah. cheesy stuff, that's more Tom Baker. He was number four. Okay. And then, um, Issues and, and, and You know, but some people like Tom yeah. Eccleston, so who's okay. so the doctor. That's what would need to be evaluated. I don't know the answers. I think those are the best doctors. I mean, most people go by not by the season, but by the person. David Tennant was just kind of you. Because yeah. I don't, I watched this Jeff Young know. series on, yeah. on Netflix. Do you know oh, that? I don't know that one. And it's the, the uh, lead is this woman, Kristen uh, Ritter. And she, it's a character from a Marvel to find out. comic. Mm -hmm. And she has her. Anyway, but but I think well, you put it on the there, bad Jen, guy. So yeah, yeah. Right. And I think yeah. I'm pretty sure. And, and, but they decided was really good in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and she was good too. But, but they were kind of. Well, if you like to, him, uh, and you yeah. can start with Doctor Nine. Okay, well, let's yeah. agree to consider. <laughs> <laughs> it's a play them first. Okay, well, I will try because yeah, I've been very curious to dive in. Yeah. So, so. Are we at a point where we want to continue the hearing to next? Yeah, week? that's what I was just sitting. Um, I so move. Okay, second. All right. So there's been a motion to continue this he hearing. Um, is it, do we get to use this, use the word prorogue? Is this meeting prorogued until the next meeting? Beats me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you just want to use some. Latin. I do. <laughs> 
Um, okay, this meeting is continued, closed, and uh, and continued until. Well, you can't use the word closed. Continued. Mm -hmm. No. Continued to the next. Closed means like. It's a hearing. It's a yeah, to when the meeting has not been closed, it's continue, to be continued. Part it's two. Continued. Part two. And just one side question about the insurance you were talking about with uh, Ron. Um, if we open it up to other bodies of government, do we have to open it up to every body of government, or can you? Ex do, can we get? Can we? Can we get? Can we get? Why don't we have a discussion on this yeah. and let Dan oh. report on well, this okay. under the new business well, at the okay. end of the meeting? Okay. The wind, would, the wind board would yes, have to make it. those have have some judgment about that and make a recommendation. Oh, okay. Just, okay. Yeah. My question was, what if what if um, All right. the police? Wait, oh, By the way, yeah. I would also amend the motion that we just made. Uh, that that the the hearing in August begin at 7:15. Okay. On the date of the board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, So that that's in the record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll post it like we normally do, but legally we have been informed that we don't need to do the paper and the you know all the legal posting, mm -hmm. but we do it uh, like our regular way of with the agenda and um, the wide distribution of that. Okay. All right, um, so therefore we are at item four for the meetings. Uh, approve the June uh, minutes, which are located behind tab three. Can I get a motion? A motion. A motion. Can I get a second? Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Yes. Uh, opposed? Hearing no opposed, the minutes are approved. Presentations. No presentations today. I, I had told you that the friends were going to come. Um, unfortunately, she had a family um, oh. situation that she could not come, but she would like to come in August. Okay, sounds good. Uh, public comment. Any members of the public wish to make a comment? Hearing none, we'll move on to the Treasury's report. Ron? Um, we received a payment from Coward Library uh, in the amount of 45000 and change. Um, that's based on their receipt of uh, property taxes for the period. Um, the uh, uh, general fund expenses uh, finished the year at just a hair under 84% of budget. Uh, so, you know, we are in good shape uh, financially. Um, our largest expenses of the past month were computer view with continuation of the upgrading of new computers, the wellness insurance network uh, for about 35000 and miscellaneous other things primarily related to books and computer services. Um, based on the information that was in your board packet, I move approval of the bills and salaries for June. Second. Good motion to, and, and a second. Uh, any discussion on the bills and salaries? Just one quick question. What, what is Demco? That's a library vendor. They do mostly our library supplies, like all the tags and the spine labels and the tape and all the okay. all that nitty gritty stuff. Infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Library supplies. Okay. Thank you. Um, any further questions? It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Stuart, could you call the roll down? Roll on that. Oh sure. Okay. Uh, Trustee Johnson. Aye. Trustee Rogers. Here. Aye. Trustee McDonald. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Wolf. Yes. Okay. Um, moving on to action items. Uh, strategic planning consultant. Well, we uh, heard from Sir Keister and Harry Christensen. Um, So we should make a decision. I don't know that we're going to have any better information than we have right now. Uh, I think both of them are capable of doing the project. Um, I think they bring strengths. Each of them has separate strengths um, that are intriguing. I think I would be comfortable with either of them quite frankly. So with that somewhat wishy-washy statement. <laughs> I think that's a fair statement. I echo your sentiments that they both seem very qualified um, with the big difference being that unfortunately with um, Harry being out of town his expenses would, would be more than, than for Sarah Keister. So 
Um, so yeah, so I feel the same way to you, but I'm inclined towards um, the more cost effective of the of Sarah being in proximity and also not just the cost, but also by her therefore being more accessible physically if we need her, as she pointed out, for a second or third meeting. But I, I, uh, I think we have a much better opportunity Can, could you speak right to, to get a more, um, a fresher look. Um, I was impressed by what I perceive as a lack of discipline and detail in the first proposal. Um, I frankly, I found the detail that I that was missing from her proposal well documented in the Christensen proposal. And the other advantage I think Christensen presents is he will be here, he will prepare staff to conduct the meetings, um, and then he will go back home. And that puts the major share of information gathering in the hands of our leadership team, which I think is a huge advantage in a long-range planning process. This is about communication with the community, and I think he has a, he has a better grasp of how to gather that information with some discipline and how to organize and present it. I also find that the majority of the reports that he uh, referred us to and that, and that we've had an opportunity to look at are more informative to the community, more informative to the staff about the process, and simply do a better job of presenting what it is that we're doing. And I find that missing from many of the reports that both those that she offered tonight and the ones that I you know that I uh, listed for you and that I've looked at from uh, her proposal I, I'm just um, I'm not I'm concerned that there's just not enough experience and discipline behind what she's proposed it's it's very soft proposal with very little detail in it about what she would actually be doing. The problem I had with Keister is that she didn't talk about incorporating staff's input. Until, and then she said, oh yeah, I'll add it, but I think that's pretty key in terms of tapping. It, it was internal. in her proposal, though. That, but, but, but yes, I, mean, I understand your comment, but... Not really. I, I, the one thing I like about Christensen um, is that he is a bit of an outsider and we've had local consultants for every other strategic plan that we've had. Um, and it might bring a slightly different perspective from a different point of view. However, he's done a lot of local work so I don't exactly know how much of an outsider he is. Um, I'm quite ambivalent. I think they're both capable. Um, you're sort of leaning toward Christensen. Mm -hmm. Jan was leaning, although she's not here to vote, <laughs> on the basis of paper and that presentation, was leaning a little bit on the basis of cost as a steward. Dan, how about you? Well, I want to know what Heather thinks. Pardon me? I want to know what Heather thinks. Um, well, I think both finalists are excellent. Um, there's not a bad choice. So that's a good position to be in, first of all. is uh, I have talked with both of them. I felt like I developed a good relationship with both of them. I could work really well with either of them. Um, also, I did check references, and they both come highly recommended from friends who are and and other directors I might not know from peer libraries. So, I I have a very high level of confidence no matter which way you go. I think for me it comes down to style more than anything else. I think. Um, 
Sarah's style is more organic and more conversational. Um, she is more well versed in the Harwood model, which is that community conversations that are led to discuss issues that aren't even necessarily specific to the library. They're specific to the community as a whole, which is an interesting approach because then you figure out how the library can meet broader community needs and how we can sync up our mission with other agencies' missions, things like that. So I think she's very well versed in that as well as in libraries in general because of her work at ILA and her work at Rails and she's local so she knows the environment. There's a certain intuitive sense that she probably has of area libraries and the common challenges we all face. Um, Harry's style is more analytical and more data driven and uh, more structured and that also has its advantages <laughs> and he's very clear about where the steps are going to be and what you need to do next uh, and he's he's very transparent on that I think sometimes his data gathering might be a little more on the traditional side in terms of some surveys and things like that um, but I have no doubt that his result is very uh, very detailed so you know, I, I, I don't I don't think there's a clear choice. I think I, I talked to Kathleen about this that I already feel comfortable with both of them. But because you guys are such an integral part of this process, I want you to feel comfortable with who we choose as the consultant. And because I'm new to this community, you guys know we'll met better than I do. So it ultimately comes down to which consultant do you feel would best blend uh, with the community? Which one would be able to tap into the zeitgeist, I, you I, know? The one the thing best. I would say is it important to remember, and Ron alluded to it a little bit, how many strategic plans have you been to, Ron? Five. Five. And I've been through, I don't know, maybe three. three? Yeah. Three cities. Um, so, I led the there will first be, one. There will be other plans. So the question is, don't try and do everything all the time I mean try and pull different strings see if this one's a little bit different than that one and maybe we'll and sometimes we'll go like well that didn't work and we'll take that learning into account for the next plan we'll Ron you'll still be here I'm sure for that um, <laughs> um, so I wouldn't what I'm saying is sort of reduce your anxiety over it in other words you know, maybe somebody who's a little different, maybe somebody's the same, but don't worry so much because it's, we'll get a plan, it'll be useful. Um, so what did the senior staff think about the approach since they would be some of the ones that would be doing those group yeah. community meetings? What yeah, well Betty think? was sitting here for a little yeah. while, I can't she talk to her now. Yeah, yeah um, we talked about this at leadership team. Um, they are all aware that this is going to take some staff involvement as well in terms of, of reaching our community. Uh, and they're on board with that, but we, we really want guidance and we really want um, I want someone who's more neutral I think Sarah talked about that the importance of that to get some honest feedback about our strengths our internal culture and our internal strength is SWOT analysis I think that's essential uh, to have that neutral person conduct some of those discussions I think yeah. the one of the things I think is a real benefit is that there's there are some specific uh, events Plan in the Christensen proposal, which we've not done in past strategic planning in that way. And I think that there's a great deal that we might learn from that. Um, I actually managed the 1984-5 strategic planning that led to a referendum and the building addition uh, in 86. Um, and we've had one other plan that was also led by another trustee who's not currently on the board. Um, we've also used three outside consultants in past plans. Um, Harry's background and approach is different from what we've done before in a way that I think would be beneficial. 
the uh, what Sarah proposes is quite similar to what we've done before, and I'm not sure that it's going to lead to very much new insight. I think there's a possibility of that with Richardson because he has some additional uh, dimensions that are in his approach to the task that we haven't tried before and I think that would be beneficial. This is not, this is a, this is a five year plan, five to seven years generally is what we run on these. It's not the last one we're going to do and it's, you know, there's no, there's no problem in choosing either one. I just think we might get a different look by having someone fresh from outside the immediate library community. Well, okay. Um. I guess to answer your question, sensing uh, studied ambivalence from all colleagues except for uh, Dr. Rogers, if I got that right. Lisa, I think, is in favor of Christensen, too. Mm -hmm. And oh. I came in with right. that. Um, but I was impressed with Sarah, I really was. I, I, you know, she did impress me with her presentation. But I'm certainly persuaded by the idea that somebody different, doing something different this time, it's really does seem a, a different approach. You know, it might be just a chance to try it that way. So, uh, can we get a motion? Uh, Ron, why don't you put a motion to be higher? That we, um award contract for uh, long-range planning to Christensen in the amount not to exceed $20,000. I'm sorry, how much? Uh, 20. 20. Not to exceed 20. The only thing I want to add is if, again, I'm, and I'm, as I said, I'm comfortable with both candidates, um, and I liked both presentations, but what I did not like about his presentation was as the person who was coming from outside the market, there were things he he was speaking generically in certain ways about a shopping mall, which is not relevant to us. There is no mall. Know. No, I know. So, so if I were in his shoes, I would have understood where in Wilmette I could have gone for a uh, to get random uh, uh, people that were part of the community, either patrons or non-patrons. Um, and so the idea again of a gift card, it, it just it's, to me that that threw me for what it's worth. Um, so I again I do like what he wrote. I do understand your points, Ron, and I'm perfectly comfortable going with him, but I, 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 I think that Sarah brings some fresh perspective to the, to the approach. Again, I've not been part of five mm -hmm. plans like you have, so I can't speak to that. But all I can say is because she has her, her breadth of, of experience in terms of everything you just cited, being on Rails, being a board member of another library, and having done a lot of local plans here, and I did like the fact that she seemed very... Um, uh, uh, less, she was very much about not being rigid in terms of how to approach this because I do think there is a value and something different. Again, I don't know if the last plans were done in an organic way or a rigid way. So, so, but I like the idea of the organic approach versus the rigid approach because I think, especially as as time has passed, there has been an evolution over what the purpose of a library is in a, in a community and how that has again evolved over the last several years and several plans. So, so again, from my perspective, and again, as I said, I, I, I will have no bad blood over going with, with Harry, but I, but I do like uh, Sarah for the reasons I just cited. So. Yeah, I liked Sarah a lot in, pres in, in uh, presentation. I was very swayed by her presentation in a way that I had not expected to be. But, you know, I'm firmly, absolutely ambivalent on the <laughs> subject. Okay. So. I, I mean, for the record, I, I think it was helpful to have you crystallize it. I like the organic style more. I like the community spirit more. But um, I'll, I'll, I plan to defer to the institutional expertise on the board that feels there's something new. So I would uh, lean towards the style that I don't particularly like as much. But uh, but you, pardon? I'll, I'll defer. I'll yeah. defer to. Well, yeah, and it is. I mean, it does come down to style, I think. And I feel like Sarah has a more similar style to to the way I approach problem solving, yeah. honestly. So I have a, uh, and we discussed this, Lisa and Kathleen and I, I have a, you know, uh, for me it's, it's a, it now. feels a little smoother because she and I share that style. However, 
I really respect Harry's style a lot because it's, he's it's different from mine, and so it could produce a, an interesting synergy to provide some of the structure and stuff that I might not. There's no wrong answer. Yeah. yeah. So right. yeah. we got a motion from. Well, second. I did not okay. get a second. I'll second. Okay. You, okay, we got a second. Now we're talking about it. Um, should we vote on that? I mean, the, we're not. The only reason is that I encourage us to vote and make a decision because we're not going to know any more. No. Yeah. In I a agree. Day yeah, yeah, yeah. Or two yeah. Yes. Or no. We, exactly. we just might as well just decide. And you brought two qualified people here, so that's the good news. So yeah. So. Are we ready to vote? Sure. So yes. roll call vote. Okay. Is a roll call vote? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Money. Okay. Trustee Johnson. Yes. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Trustee McDonald. Aye. Trustee yes. O'Loughlin. Yes. And respectfully, Trustee Wolf will say no. So. Okay. So. <laughs> All righty. Okay. So talk to Harry and um, let us know if we can get the details right, and we'll okay. assume that we will move along um, with him as our consultant. The other question this. is, with that Park District survey, mm -hmm. that's a good chance to get exactly, I don't know how many questions, I don't know where that is, to get you mean a, a community survey? Yeah. The one that in, in conjunction to with get the park the needs district, assessment a little to bit. get in terms of who's using, who's using Definitely. and not using, even though it's open and you have to pay extra for it. Mm -hmm. so right, exactly. It, everybody. And uh, I'm having another meeting about that um, actually next week. <laughs> uh, and we're going to sit down and talk about how we're going to frame the questions so that they work for all of the agencies together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's perfect. Great. Okay. Um, Okay. Um, aha. The um, budget and appropriation ordinance, um, and um, which was passed um, in the May meeting, which would be followed by the levy. Um, obviously, there's been some. Um, concern about this. Um, we, and to refresh people's recollection, um, at the um, uh, May board meeting we adopted a budget that was approximately two and a half percent and a, a budget and a corresponding levy that was in fact two and a half percent less than last year. Um, and um, reflecting the fact that um, trying to sharpen our ability to, you know, budget and accurately forecast our expenses, and also uh, reflecting the fact that there are uh, salary, uh, some salary increases, and given that we are a library, a big chunk of what we do um, is related to personnel costs. So there's some budget changes there. Um, However, um, we have not yet had the audit at this point, and it looks like tentatively in conversations with Heather and with Barb that um, some of the assumptions that we were in the budget that was the tentative budget that was passed in May are already not looking like what it's going to be. The one of them, the part of that budget, the expenses, I think we're all pretty comfortable with the expenses, but one of the things is we assumed in this budget that would, there would be a, a transfer um, to um, the building and equipment, but now at this point we think that that transfer is going to be approximately half of what we thought it was going to be. So, um, which sort of changes some of our thinking on some of these things and perhaps possibly a change in, um, uh, you know, possibly requires some back to the drawing board kind of thinking on the budget and having a chance to reconsider and look at it again in the form of a finance committee meeting. 
So Ron, as chair of the finance committee, would like to have a finance committee meeting um, to go at the budget and levy. Again, the levy follows along. No, I'd like it's to winter separate. this summer <laughs> after the budget. That was it. Um, so, okay, Ron, why don't you talk a little bit on the subject as well? So, to sort of figure out where we are and what is the best next steps on okay. passing the combined. The um, budget and appropriation ordinance effectively sets the level that we have authorized for the fiscal year, but it does not obligate to spend everything that is authorized. And in addition to that, we don't adopt the levy until September or October. It has to be approved by November. The levy is due to the county by early December, so it has to be approved by November. We typically have adopted it earlier than that, but the budget and appropriation ordinance does not obligate the level of expenditure that may appear in the levy. Um, and it's the tax levy that determines what goes to the county collector's office and that's from there that they prepare what goes out to residents in pro property tax bills. The final numbers for the levy actually are not set until four to six months after we have taken our action because the um, county collector, uh, also known as the county clerk, because those offices were merged, um, applies an additional two to three percent, which we don't determine. That's determined based on past collections. And in some years, our, our total collections have been 97 percent, approximately. In some years, they've been a little bit higher than that. The county collector looks at that, waves a magic wand, and chooses a number, and sets that for uncollected or un, uh, uncollected taxes, basically. So the bottom line is that when we adopt the levy and appropriate, uh, that's what sets what the county collector works from. The budget and appropriation ordinance is an early step in that process. It's not the final step. We have a couple of options available. Our business manager would very much like us to adopt the budget today because it makes it much easier for her to conduct the tasks that she needs to carry out in managing libraries, resources, and budgeting activity. We could adopt the levy amended. We could amend, I'm sorry, adopt the budget and appropriation ordinance with a lower figure for transfer. We could leave that figure where it is and reduce it later in an, a budget amendment this fall. Um, either way, um, the numbers that appear in the budget and appropriation ordinance do not obligate us to spend every penny. In fact, there are some items like the contingency fund, which we never spend, but we have to appropriate it so that if we did have a catastrophic event, fortunately we're not subject to the flooding, but if a tornado came down Wilmette Avenue and did damage to the library, 
we would have we'd be calling on our contingency fund to address some of those issues perhaps we don't know but we can't we cannot do that if it's not in the appropriation ordinance because what the appropriation ordinance does is gives us permission to spend if needed so what I would like us to do is to plan for a finance committee meeting to look at this in more detail but we have a choice to make we can uh, follow the wishes of our business manager adopt this with the expectation that it can be amended later if need be we can amend it this evening um, or we can defer it to August which is what she hopes we don't do um, August is the latest we can defer it because Heather's telling me that we've got to adopt it in August mm -hmm. because it's got to be delivered down to the clerk's office um, mm -hmm. and in the second week of September. The second week right. of September. So Barb would like it adopted, um, but we can still adopt it in August. Um, if I might. The budget is a planning document. The one that really requires us to put our nose our thinking cap on is the levy not the budget um, what's in there I mean we adopted a budget in the tentative budget in May and guess what it's July and it's already already well, different it's tweaking right. so um, I don't uh, Bob wants <laughs> our business manager would prefer that it be adopted so it gives her a document to continue to carry out the ordinary business of this particular government entity, which governmental entities need budgets to operate. Um, so, but that doesn't mean that it is, it, it still can be, we still need to think about it between now and August. So either is an acceptable, in my opinion, way to proceed. Um, What's your pleasure, folks? Well, um, I should make my mea culpa. I uh, inadvertently violated the Open Meetings Act and wanted to uh, disclose that in an open meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, uh, before I was trained, so that's my only uh, thread of an excuse I'm holding on to, <laughs> uh, sent an email to all of my colleagues uh, asking, uh, declaring my intention to uh, seek an amendment to the budget. Uh, with the understanding that today there wasn't a decision to be made to um, amend the uh, and eliminate the $900,000 transfer from the general fund to the um, uh, special reserve fund. Um, it's the only part of the budget that I have any concerns with um, because um, everything else seems reasonable and it sounds like tweaks are going to happen. But the policy decision as to whether to bake in that $900,000 transfer to the Special Reserve Fund, I think then has an impact on the levy. And I think at this time, it's not necessary to add to our Special Reserve Fund. I think we're sufficient for the next year. I think all of our potential uh, special Reserve Fund needs are covered by what's in there today. And so my preference would be, and I'm not making a motion at the moment, but my preference would be that we um, amend this planning document today, which can always be changed later as the audit continues or we get more clarity on what our uh, Special Reserve Fund needs might be. But today it seems clear to me we ought not plan to levy $900,000 to transfer it to the Special Reserve Fund. Can I address that? Please. Okay. So it does not impact the levy at all. That $900,000 is not part of the levy calculation. It is, um, it is 
part, so even if we did take it out completely, the levy yeah. would still be the same regardless, uh, because it's there's certain portions of this that are not included in the levy calculation. That is one of them: our special reserve funds, the transfer, other things that are passed through lines and things like that are not included in the levy as well. Uh, friends' expenses and things like that; so those aren't included in the levy. You, uh, so, may, may I understand more? So that's helpful. So where does the nine hundred thousand dollars come from it is saying we are estimating yeah. that we might have that additional amount of money or up to that additional amount of money at the end of the fiscal year and it gives us the legal right to transfer that money to the building fund up to that amount if we don't pass it if it's zero then we don't have that ability to transfer it into our special reserve fund and so it stays in our uh, operating fund and then it leaves us open to litigation for um, having too large of a, an, surplus. a surplus right of an operating fund and then um, that's what our lawyer has recommended that we transfer whatever the surplus is at the end of the year into a special reserve fund to protect the institution in that way. Now the big question of course is how much do you want to transfer? Um, and you had take a separate vote on that. You take a separate vote on that after we have audited numbers so that we have a better sense of how much we're really talking about. This is based on last year's numbers so that was the estimate. Uh, when I came in as a new director, one of the first directives was to keep to up the pace of expenditures. Uh, our expenditures had been lower because of the renovation and because of um, the retirement of my predecessor. So the pace of expenditures, particularly when it came to staff, no new staff were hired. And so as a new director, part of my job uh, from what I've understood so far is the board wanted me to pick up that pace a little bit so I did and so now I think realistically we're talking more four hundred thousand dollars is a more realistic number but whatever you put in there that's the ceiling so it's sort of like the credit card limit like you don't ever reach your credit card limit hopefully but you're allowed to should you need to should the because you're you're trying to guess like how much is the surplus really gonna be yeah. uh, and you know if it if you shoot too high then you've got too much money left in your operating fund if you shoot too low then you can't transfer any of that money out so does I, I hope no, that helpful. clarifies it a little so, bit. But it sounds like um, if there's a four if there's an expected four hundred thousand dollars surplus, which is better. Than That's what we think it's going to be. Yeah. Then I think we ought to think about not levying that extra $400,000. And that's a decision with respect to the levy. As I said, right now we're trying to deal with the budget. Um, and Heather did receive those instructions that we depressed programming, you know, children's programs weren't taking place, all sorts of things weren't taking place during um, the renovation, and we wanted to start building those kind of annual things which would be part of the annual budget back in where they had been, uh, because we were spending everything out of the special reverse reserve fund for the construction, but it created this temporary depression oh, dip in what, we in, were dip in yeah. what our yeah. normal expenditures were during that period of time. So we need to get back to doing the things we as a library like to do, which is not build buildings, but conduct library business. And so that was Heather's charge to get the library back running at the level that we wanted it. So we do anticipate expenditures going up, and already in half a year, the expenditures have gone up enough so that we have possibly half and based upon these expenditures for the coming year it might be pretty close to in balance so we don't really know there is no decision to transfer money to reserves without a board vote so basically, in B, other words, we can go on and vote on right now if we want to. C, we can hold off till you've got the audited come, mm -hmm. the audited statements. That's the bottom line. Okay. What we also should, I mean, one of the reasons why the expenditures were lower was that we used the auditorium as a staging area during the renovation, as each section of the library 
was closed in order to allow them to redo duct work and lighting and so forth. That area basically had no activity in it, sure. and we transferred materials to the auditorium so that they would continue to be accessible to patrons, but it also meant the auditorium wasn't usable for programs during you know, approximately a year. Right. So there were a lot of activities that didn't happen because of the renovation activity that was going on in that space. The next round, the next audit will reflect a year past the pro the construction sure. or renovation will project. Will be half past and half not because we really in the fall of last year is when we sort of wound up everything. Right, out. but so the point is that there's activity in the last twelve, last nine to twelve months of I the year that didn't nine, occur the prior year, and that caused expenses to go down. For sure. one thing, we weren't doing a lot of things with that space because it was being used for other purposes. Right. Okay, is, so... Can I, can I close on one suggestion? Because it was helpful. I finally understood a little bit more from Heather's explanation. Um, so thank you for that. Um, my suggestion would be for the board to consider taking a policy matter that if we have an operating surplus, or we don't because we, we ramp up and that's great, and we hit our budget of you know, five seven. That's what we should be. That's great. Uh, then I do think it ought to go in the operating surplus. I think we should make a policy decision that our special reserve fund is fine, and that we don't intend to roll over an operating surplus into the special reserve fund, uh, no matter what happens. And I think we ought to have our operating budget be its operating budget. And if we end up with the surplus or we do a good job and we ramp up our programming which we weren't able to do during the renovation uh, then great but but I that's that's the part I find objectionable is sort of the um, the backstop of the special reserve fund if the operating surplus is higher than anticipated because it raises um, capital questions which I think are independent of the process we're going through so for, for this my suggestion would be and I I won't make a motion but I'll make it clear what I would prefer is that we strip that transfer out of the budget for our planning purposes, that that's our intention going forward. Okay, in the short run, we've got two things we can do today. Yeah. We can pass, we can amend the budget, we can, and pass it. We can amend it and defer it. We can just defer everything and hash this out in a finance committee meeting. What's your pleasure? Oh, can we also just pass the budget as is? I would like to pass the budget as is. That's a fourth option, is. right? Yeah. Pardon me? It was a fourth option, which is to pass the budget, budget as is. is. As is. Yeah. Okay. So, um, which is, yeah. I'm going to offer uh, a motion that reduces the anticipated transfer to 500000 with, you know, we certainly can amend that later after we've had further discussion, but we don't have the audit and we don't have some other information that could have an impact on on that. Part of the, the challenge in this whole budgeting process is that the fiscal year has already begun for which this budget is intended, even though we don't collect the taxes for it until next year. Right. So, I'm very cautious about trying to get sharp focus out of a crystal ball that's going to be fuzzy even after we have the audit completed. So what I would recommend is that we um, approve the budget and appropriation ordinance with an anticipated transfer not to exceed 500 that simply gives us permission if there's a surplus. It does not obligate us to transfer a dime. And this does not cause the transfer. That requires a separate independent action. Also keep in mind that we don't levy for the amount of this transfer. This does not affect the levy. This affects the budget and appropriation ordinance. So it's permission it's giving ourselves permission if the circumstances put us in that position. 
it does not obligate a transfer to occur. Okay, um, Ron, I'm going to take your motion, which is to be specific on the um, ordinance number 2017-18-183 um, on the uh, page three of that item five um, on the line there where it says 900,000. Um, Ron is imposing uh, an amendment so that that would be 500,000. Is there a second? I have still questions. Okay. okay. Um, my questions are twofold. Number one, I mean, the most important thing to me is to approve a budget tonight so that Barbara's not handicapped. Okay. And the most important thing to me tonight is that we pass a budget so that Barbara's not handicapped and we, by extension we keep the efficiency of the library moving forward so it has a budget. Secondly, I have a question, which is, let's say we do this amendment as Ron proposes and we end up with $700,000 uh, as a surplus down the line. Um, you had mentioned before, Heather, that there are some kind of legal consequences if we don't roll that money. So, right. so to me, it's I don't know. To me, that there's an, I don't I understand what you're trying to do, Ron. And I appreciate that. But there's a, to me, there's a, by keeping it at nine hundred thousand dollars, we're keeping our we're keeping ourselves safe, so to speak. So that if we have to, we can move that amount in. We have gone over, Dan. You were not again at the finance meeting where we discussed this. I mean, most likely it's going to fall under the five hundred thousand dollars. But we are in a very tricky year here again. This has already been cited because we're just ramping up again to full to full function. And I just feel that to to I believe this is trying to handicap the library for for I have to say it for 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 the resume of the board. There are certainly a lot of things out there about pressure about being fiscally responsible, which I am all about, and I think everybody on the board is about. But there's also, but part of being fiscally responsible is not trying to shortchange the operations of the library for someone's resume, and that's what I feel is going on here. And I think that the amendment should stay this. That we should not amend it and keep it at the nine hundred thousand well, dollars. Let me let so me suggest though that the um, and, and there's no reason not to. Sorry, because it's not going to hurt anything right. by keeping it where it is, and we've had it there for a reason. We okay, will so have Ron, this, just one yeah. second. Okay. There's been a motion. Is there a second? If I don't hear a second, then the motion. There's then there's no motion. Okay, second. you're going to second it? Sure. Okay, so there's been a, okay, now there's a motion on the floor. Okay, okay. thank you. Sure. Let me, let me suggest, though, that we will have the audit before we have to adopt the levy, and at that time, we can pass an amended budget and appropriation ordinance if the circumstances you're describing uh, occur. Um, so if you pass the amended uh, an amended one, isn't that about twice as much work? You've got one and then you're going. Yeah. Yes, it is. But we're off to it, aren't we, Lisa? Well, <laughs> let's ask the person who does the work. Yeah. Um, Cynthia, is this twice as much work to change a number in the? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, by, by by far, it's more than that. It's 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 just it's adding an unnecessary complication yeah. to from amended, my perspective. Yeah. It, it's it's we're doing something here for eyewash. And I think, I mean, we're in a world now where you have to be sensitive to those things on the one hand, but on the other hand, what's, what's most efficient and what serves the library best, and we as a board are supposed to serve the library best and the community best by being fiscally responsible, is to keep the proposal the way it is with the understanding that we still have to make a specific motion or amendment to move any monies into the special fund. And so that's the time to address it, but leave us the flexibility and the room to breathe if by some chance things happen to hit the high end. We're not penalizing the community, we're not penalizing the library, we're not penalizing the state by keeping the proposal as it is now. And that to me is the most important thing, is to, is to act in the best interest of the function of the library and the community. So. Okay, let's have a vote on the amendment to the proposed. Um, all right, Stuart, call it. Okay, it, Trustee it, Johnson. Um, I'm going to uh, address what I imagine may have been misconstrued as. Uh, so you're not voting; you're talking. I'm going to explain my vote. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're what? He's abstaining. Uh, no, no, he's, he's, he's explaining, explaining it. Yeah, I'm speaking. He's explaining it. Yeah, I'm explaining it. Um, <laughs> So I don't think anyone's engaging in any resume building of the board, and I don't think there's any eyewash is happening, as uh, you may have suggested. I think there's a real debate about the size of the budget, and it's essentially just a budget question, and whether the budget is uh, too large. And I think the legal consequences that we potentially face is if the operating surplus is too big. 
and that's really the legal. When you say legal so, consequences, what are you talking about? What are you referring to? That's what, okay. If the um, that the um, people will have a, a tax um, read action process that they'll, that they'll that they will they will claim that the um, the library levied too much and that they shouldn't have to pay the their library taxes at all um, because they levied too much and then they that it increases your risk of more of those um, situations should your uh, operating budget extend past uh, the limitations of say a year's worth of expenses yeah and you know uh, another option yep. is is certainly I can ask our lawyer to come to the August board meeting and explain this to you in a way that is so much better than I can <laughs> no, right, so we're, right now we're in the middle of a vote but so the, the I, only, I, I, I I don't want to put um, I appreciate what uh, Tristy Rogers is attempting to do to try to address some of my concerns, but I've also learned just now that it's uh, significant additional work, which I certainly didn't anticipate to change a line item, and so it puts me in a precarious position because I'm not trying to, I'm trying to find the proper venue to have this policy discussion in a way that doesn't generate additional uh, work for staff. Uh, and as the new guy in this process, I'm not sure when and how to have that policy discussion. The finance committee. The finance committee. Right. So, um, if um, you're telling me there's a better place to have this discussion and uh, amending this, and we, we still have plenty of time to have this discussion about right, you know, finding the right number for the budget, ensuring that our uh, surplus is the right size, but this particular avenue, although I appreciate the sentiment, uh, costs more work than it's worth, then, um, you know, I'll, although I, I really appreciate the effort, I think uh, what I'm hearing from staff is that it's it's probably not worth doing, so I'll vote, uh, despite the, the the effort, I'll vote against this, uh, this amendment in the spirit of not giving additional work to staff. Okay. No. Trustee well, Rogers. No. Trustee McDonald. Nay. Nay. Trust and trust you all. all right, so the okay. amendment to the budget has not passed. All right. I move that we approve the budget as prepared. I second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Just want to be clear that we'll have a finance committee. We are going to have a finance committee, yes. and Cynthia will work her wonders and come up with a meeting sometime and before the next board meeting. Yes. And, and again, if I listen, I heard you, um, Dan, you did say you thought the budget itself was okay. Right. Well, okay. So let's get this budget. Uh, yeah. Let's just vote on it. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's, well, that's, it, yeah. As I, I'll tell you, as I learn more um, on my first time, there is, uh, you know, I'm new to it, and so. Uh, I'm gonna vote. Uh, okay. I'll, yeah. I'm I'm, I'll look forward to again. learning more of the We're finance committee until I get comfortable with okay. the full budget. Okay. I, so I move to make a motion unless the motion was already made. It was. It's okay. It was second. 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 Oh, oh, second. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Trustee Johnson. Sorry. All we have to do is vote. Thank you, Trustee Johnson. Yeah. Okay, Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Wolf. Aye. Okay, now we've got the levy. And I propose. You can call her now. Since. I move that we table the levy. Yeah, to August. that's what I wanted to do. Is table, <laughs> that we table that. the levy. Yeah. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. We table the levy. I was just going to take it off the agenda. But. Um, no, it can't, take, it can't be taken it's off the agenda. Well, tabled. <laughs> Do we, is it a roll call? Is that a roll call? I think yes. maybe not. Yes. <laughs> okay, do it. Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee okay. O'Loughlin. All right. Trustee O'Loughlin. Yes. Okay, Trustee Wolf. All right. Yes. Okay. And thank you, by the way, for... Okay, and as I said, we will have a finance committee meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, can you remind me who... We tabled it. Yeah, but it was... Uh, Cynthia was calling Karen at the moment. It, uh, who seconded that? Ron proposed the uh, motion. Trustee McDonald seconded. Trustee McDonald okay. seconded. Ron um, table. Ron. 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 Mm -hmm. I moved yes. to table, yes. And a okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And that was unanimous. Okay. 
on to Imagination Playground. That's what the call was for. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> Karen's on the phone? Because Karen's on the oh, way. Because oh, oh, okay. uh, she wanted to come oh, okay. and talk to you about oh, this okay. Imagination Playground because she's the expert in youth services. Not you want to go to Can we bring Michael back, 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 back to discuss this you guys? You want to go do okay, moving <laughs> on. You want to do quotations <laughs> for paperback and video <laughs> shelving while she's coming? Sure. Oh, here she is. Oh, here she is. Okay. Moving it on. Hi. Take that Right there. <laughs> Welcome. And I have to s start this by saying that people love the fort <laughs> and the tarp. So you've got a great track record in proposing <laughs> well, interesting yeah, things yeah. for kids. So tell us about the Imagination Playground. Well, I'm glad you brought up the fort because I think the Imagination Playground is a nice extension of that. It's got a lot of similar goals as far as like the building and the community work and the STEM. Um, but one of the issues that we've been having is that we want to offer more to working families um, for weekend programming, but we just don't have the staff to do something every week. And one of the things I think that the Imagination Playground blocks could do for us is we can just have Imagination Playground weekends where we can pull out the blocks, we can put them in the program room, and we can let families in to play. And it's something a little special and a little bit different. Um, and it makes the library a little bit of a destination, but it doesn't involve any staff prep time or extra staff. If I could speak to this one. Uh, okay. I think it's phenomenal. Like I've got three little guys. Have you guys played with these before? Oh yeah, we they're did. super fun. They right? really are. It pump it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're it's the kids go bananas over these things. So it's a great idea. Good question. And I love how it means. Oh, I'm sorry. How will you evaluate? Because I'm getting ready to be curious a lot in terms of evaluate the success of that program. What are some? What would you evaluate it for? Sure. Well, I think. Um, it would be hard to do a numerical count, just like with the Ford, mm -hmm. where we can't sit back there and like count how many people you Beyond it. count. In terms right, of so I think a lot of it objectives. is, um, we know the Ford's successful because people come in and they bring their, you know, maybe there's a kid who comes in who usually comes during the week with their nanny, and they come in on the weekend with their parent, and they're like, you've got to see this, and they drag mm -hmm. them back there, right? <laughs> so I feel like that excitement when people come in, when people are asking about it, when that's the first thing they want to go and they want to do and they want to see. I feel like we, we get a good feel for that kind of level of excitement. Um, if the door is open all day and nobody's going in there, we'll know it. Um, the mess is a good indicator of the level of interest. Okay, so will you be documenting some of the things periodically? Um, and that's another discussion that I'll have, but I'm just curious since we this is coming up for budget in terms of sure. documenting some of the stuff we're Yeah, you spending. know, one of the things we've been talking about lately is how do we document things that are kind of non-numerical, and we've been trying to keep um, sort of anecdotal stories that people see at the desk that are of interest, mm -hmm. and we've been trying to do more of that, and I do think it's a really good idea to especially do that around new programs or new services that are being offered to kind of document those responses that people are having. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh, yeah, and uh, one of the things I also really like about this particular product is it's very um, intergenerational and multi-age and multi-ability. And so, you know, it's it's hard to find really great play sets that work on so many different levels, and this one really does. Um, so, you know, Karen and I talked a lot about it. She investigated many different types and came up with this one for a reason um, because it, it really does hit all those those marks that we're seeking. And you could take it outside, I see. It can go outside, yeah. It's not supposed to stay outside, although I have seen outdoor playgrounds that do it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they are, um, they can be used outdoors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, depending on what our front space ends mm -hmm. up looking like, use I think it on a nice play. day, it would be super fun to do it outside. Um, move approval of the expenditure for the play Second. for not to exceed 9,000. Is that sufficient? Nine thousand. Is shipping included in there? <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Shipping is like seven eighty five. Do you want to just say nine thousand five hundred? Maybe. Nine thousand five hundred. I would, I would know that no, for very no, small differences, the director no, already has authority. Just for what? Just in case. Right. No, you got it. You, it's yeah, ordered. So okay. You, nine thousand. I mean, it, if if you think that there's more than thirty five dollars of 
of additional costs that could happen, we can you know we can include a larger number. But you don't, you don't anticipate any. Okay, we're good then. Okay. 9, so I think okay. I think nine thousand is probably a good number for this. Okay, okay. so uh, I second Ron, it. You, okay, second. I second it. Um, roll call, Stuart. This is a big okay, day. Okay, Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee O'Loughlin. Yes. And Trustee Wolf. Aye. Okay. Thank Great. you. You guys should come play with them. Thank you for. <laughs> yeah. So we have a board meeting down there. What color will they be? They're blue. Okay. They're, they're, they're always blue. blue. They're yeah, they're like the picture, right? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if they could come in colors. Just like that. I don't know if you could get blue. red, if you could get yellow. Nope. Okay. All right. Thank you, Karen. Uh, LFI. Okay, this is for new media shelving. Um, if you've seen on our DVDs, first of all, they're packed in there. Our collection's extensive and wonderful. Um, it's amazing, everything circs, cause, and everything does. It's, you know, we have been doing some weeding and, and things as well, but we've we've run across DVDs that have circed 200 times, which is crazy. Um, but what it means is, is that our collections are growing also because of our new DVD rules. Um, our circulation is increasing on in that particular format. People love getting more movies for a slightly longer period of time. So we wanted to change the zigzag shelving to flat, regular shelving. I mean, it's a kind of a deep well, so it. it makes them in a, a line spine out sort of like a book. Uh, we do get a lot of complaints from our patrons that uh, a lot of them are out of order with the zigzag shelving uh, as well as difficult to navigate and browse. Um, so, you know, it's it's something that um, they we've been hearing about for quite a few years now and now that the collection's growing traditional shelves also will allow you to have more on the shelf. I move approval of the paperback video shelving uh, for an amount not to exceed nine thousand. What did you say? Another nine. Nine. Okay. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Any uh, further discussion? Uh, Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee O'Loughlin. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. Hey, actually, I forgot. I made one. Mis I wanted to ask one more thing about the. Um, the thing Karen was just here the for. The imagination program? Yeah, because there's a discount on here that's listed through June 30th of 2017. Will that discount extend into July? Yes. Okay, so so we'll be, we're not going to get penalized for that. Okay. Right. Okay, just want to make sure. Oh, I, oh, okay, that I didn't get. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, the next item is uh, Lisa's um, expenses at ALA. Um, I'm sure you're all aware because we just pay attention to those kinds of things. That it is a new law that says that any trustee expense has to be specifically approved by the board. So Lisa has um, attached her expenses for this. Move approval. That's an amount of two hundred and fifteen. The entire two hundred and fifteen dollars. Sure. Right. Uh, Not to exceed. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got, you got. You also have travel. Oh, is there an additional amount? Uh, for the, uh, it's not on there, so you better yeah, an, an additional 123 days of parking. Oh, okay. Well, then so it's 215 plus 12302. Quick, somebody do the math. 313 Is it 12302? Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I was a former treasurer. Excellent. So, so, okay. Um, so moved. Okay. A second? Second. Um, Stuart, yeah, yeah. go for it. Okay, Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee O'Loughlin. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Hi. Yeah, well, we need to vote. Okay. Well, we're, can I say something very quickly? Um, because you just went to conference, ILA conference, the early bird registration is open. Oh. So it, place this year? it is at Tinley Park yeah. this oh. year. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in attending ILA, I highly recommend it. Um, talk to Cynthia, she'll get you all signed up. Okay. What are the dates? Is it in the summer? I know. It was, yeah. it's only October 10th to 12th. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I know it was in there. I saw it somewhere. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. I should write that down. All right. Um, Director's report. Yes. Okay, I already told you about ILA. Um, 
We've been doing a lot more learn while you earn, and we just had another one. We we did conflict resolution skills, um, stealthy readers advisory, display ideas. I've been bringing in people to talk to our staff about all sorts of different things, and that's going really well. Every time we have a conference, now we have a conversation, sort of a recap with any interested staff, so people who went can kind of share their information. So that's exciting. Uh, I went to I ALA, so that took up a significant amount of my time in June. Um, I listed some highlights here. Some of uh, the things that I really liked, uh, this idea of an all-city play day event, which was really fascinating. Um, but I do like the idea during our strategic plan of going out and seeing how we can partner more with uh, our community agencies and create these kinds of events for the whole community. The chamber does a lot as well. Um, but I think that you know we can really focus on some of the literacy efforts that we're trying to obtain and some of the efforts towards play-based learning. And we can really partner in new ways. So I thought that was really exciting. Um, been thinking a lot about Library of Things. I put a line in our budget so that we can experiment with that try to um, circulate some actual physical objects. I made a whole list here of possibilities. Doesn't mean we're going to do them all, but hey, the, the world's our oyster, puppies, right? Puppies. Puppies. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Academic libraries do puppies, okay. like during finals okay. weeks. Yeah. You can check out a puppy to de-stress. It's fascinating. Uh, I went to a We Need Diverse Books um, session, which uh, really got me thinking a lot about uh, equity issues in our collections as well as in our programming and how we can uh, go into our planning process in a different way to make sure that we are reaching all audiences. So that was really interesting. And um, Hillary Clinton was amazing, and that was the highlight. <laughs> conference for me, uh, just to hear her speak about her love of libraries. Uh, and I saw Lisa at the um, Ron Chernow one, which I didn't put on here, but he has a new book about Ulysses S. Grant.